Hello, my little creative sparks. Today, we're going to be talking about my entire workflow when it comes to creating art, marketing it, and successfully selling it online. If you love hearing about how you can start selling your art online while embracing the unique spark that you are, I think you're really going to like live your art life. There's a link in the description of this video. I also have a super awesome free gift for you at the end of this video that's going to be huge for setting up your success as an artist. All right, let's jump in. It's no secret that the art world can be a bit fuzzy at times. There's a million ways that you can go about getting your eyes on your art and sales rolling in, but clarity is usually so far from the equation. In this episode, I'm going to be running you through each of the steps that I usually go through, from finishing a painting to sending it off in the mail for a customer. I've split it up into three main sections, before the painting's finished, after the painting is finished, and then after you've sold the painting. Let's jump in. So let's start with before the painting is finished. The journey does start before the paint has finished drying. So to the rest of the non-creatives out there, artists can be a bit mysterious. We create beautiful things out of nothing, and apparently we see the world in a different way. So naturally, when we give them glimpses into our little studio spaces, whether it be an actual studio with those gorgeous floor-to-ceiling windows, or a spot on your dining room table, or even your bedroom floor, these studio spaces, they're magical. So are the creations that are coming to life inside of them. So the first part of my workflow is to share the works in progress on social media. Share what you're working on. Work in progress posts tend to do super well on social media. Plus you have so much flexibility in the way that you actually use them. You can snap a pic with your hand hovering over the painting, loaded brush in hand, or you can even take a step back to capture more of your environment, paint tubes scattered around and everything. You don't even really have to clean up. That's one of the bonus parts about being an artist. Even our messes are beautiful. <laughs> so some things you can do is you can talk about how the art makes you feel, what inspired it. There's so many things that you can talk about that are gonna have your fans hanging on every word. So the next thing you can do is to share that work in progress with your email list. If you're one of those smart cookies that has already been nurturing an email list with your art, be sure to let them in on the adventure too. I personally tend to keep the extra juicy story bits for my email list. The more powerful personal stuff usually feels a little too vulnerable for social media. I love sharing that stuff with my email list instead. All right, so both of those could be done before your painting is finished. Now we're gonna move into, you've just wrapped up those last final brush strokes and your art is finished. Now we're gonna talk about some things that you can do after that. So the first one we're gonna talk about is to have a photo shoot. So next I like to set up for a little professional style photo shoot for the painting. I am not a professional photographer, um, but I do have a pretty good camera and I've been doing it for long enough that I've picked up some tips or tricks. But if you are not super familiar with photographing artwork, I'm sure there's some locals in your area that would be more than willing to, you know, use their services for you. Typically, I'm aiming to capture high quality photographs of my finished painting that I'm going to be using on my website, social media, galleries, as well as files that are actually suited for making large scale prints. So there's definitely an art to photographing your own artwork. So like I said before, I recommend working with a local photographer that is actually familiar with photographing artwork. It can definitely be tricky. But yeah, there's people out there that know exactly what they're doing. So when I'm setting up for my little art photo shoot, I tend to set up my space and then fine tune my lighting situation until everything is just perfect. I have an old Canon Rebel T5i that does the trick for me. 
yeah, she's a bit old, but we've traveled the world together and I love her to death. <laughs> and I usually put my camera on a steady tripod and I also use a Bluetooth remote to trigger the shutter so that you don't get an ounce of camera shake. So while I've got my camera and art all set up, that's when I actually like to add a little bit more playful photos to the mix. So usually I'll pop the art in a frame on my wall. You can prop it up on a shelf with some beautiful things, create some really gorgeous flat light photos. Really, the possibilities are endless here. Get creative. So when you do get creative with those photo styles, it gives you a ton to choose from for social media, your website, your email list. So yeah, keep it lively and fun. And as long as you pay attention to a couple of things, you're still going to maintain a nice professionally shot air, especially if you work with someone that knows exactly what they are doing. All right, so the next thing after that little photo shoot is done is I like to get writing. So the actual painting is only a piece of the puzzle. The story of the painting, the title, the inspiration, experience, they all add to that rich tapestry that is your art. So please, for the love that is all in good and holy, don't hold this information back. Pair it alongside your art and watch your fans start to swoon and drool. Create a file, whether this be Word doc, Google doc, Evernote, something, where you capture all of this information. You wanna make sure that you have a compelling title for your painting. I want you to capture the story. Also, we're gonna capture information about the physical information. So size, medium, subject, overall color, surface, whether or not it's framed, so on and so forth. You also wanna write down things about your inspiration and if it's part of a series or a collection. And if it is, how that one piece fits into the big picture. This is powerful stuff. Focus on the feeling of the art and then how also it can benefit the viewer. Will it calm them, excite them, inspire them to explore nature, maybe save nature? All right, moving along. The next thing that you can do after you've finished your art is to put it on your website. Professional high quality photograph, check. A smattering of fun photos of the piece, check. All sorts of juicy details written down about it, check, check, check. Now it's time to grace your website with your latest brushstrokes. In the portfolio portion of your site, add your latest painting complete with all the juicy story details. Seriously, don't leave this out. The next thing that you wanna do is to list it for sale. If your end goal is to sell the painting, then your next step is to list that baby for sale. Whatever platform you use to sell your art, Squarespace, Etsy, Saatchi Art, there's so many out there. It's time to get it up and available to buy. So you want to decide on a price for your painting and do a bit of research on shipping rates. Most couriers have online calculators now which make your life super easy when it comes to calculating what it's going to cost to ship it. One thing to note is that the psychology that people hold around shipping costs is kind of fascinating. Because shipping costs aren't considered to be adding value to the purchase, most people are going to aim to spend the least amount possible. They also tend to be wary of shipping costs. So go out of your way to be totally transparent and list the exact shipping costs that they're going to be charged. So the next thing is going to be to share, share, share. So now that your latest painting graces your website and your shop, it's time to share it with the world. You took the time to write out the story, inspiration, and other juicy details. Now you can take that hard work and turn it into a bunch of posts for social media. If you've got a particularly long and juicy story, you can even split it up to make your life easier. So rather than having one single novel length post on Instagram, split it up into a few different posts. And then also when you're sharing your painting, it is so important to make sure that it is crystal clear that it is for sale. Leave a link in your bio or in the post that you're sharing it to. Now is not the time to be cute and coy about selling. Be super clear and upfront. All right, so those are all the things that I do once I finish the painting 
But now we're going to move on to the last section. Congrats, you just sold your painting. Now we have some still more work to do. <laughs> so the first thing is all about communication. Communication is key. Your new customer is already going to have an email zooming to them with confirmation details from whatever platform you use for e-commerce. But I always like to go the extra mile to sneak in that personal touch. Send them a sweet thank you email, sharing your gratitude for the sale, and while you're there, update them on some things. Let them know how long it's going to take for the art to be packaged and shipped out, and whether or not they can expect a tracking number, or other details like that. Clarity is key, always. So, after you've done a bit of communicating, it's time to actually package that painting for shipping. So this process is going to vary depending on your art, but there's always one rule of thumb that I follow, and it's this. Package the art as carefully as you would if you had to throw it down three flights of stairs. Hmm. We've all been in that place, so excited to see a parcel arrive on your doorstep, carrying that new thing that you treated yourself to, only to see that it has been damaged in transit. Heart broken. <laughs> And you sure as hell wouldn't want your customer to feel the same way. So bubble wrap, waterproof envelopes, clear packing sleeves, stiff cardboard boxes, whatever it takes to make sure that your painting arrives completely intact on their doorstep. I also love to leave little goodies in my packages. I am so appreciative of my customers and I want them to know that. So I always include a handwritten thank you note sealed with an adorable wax seal with my initials and a business card. Sometimes I pop in other small gifts too, like small prints, special discount, or another free item. A little gratitude goes a very long way. So once your package and painting is all ready to go, you are going to mail it. So once it can actually fly down some stairs, <laughs> you actually have to let it fly. <laughs> Couple notes about shipping though. You always want to make sure you get a tracking number and whenever possible, require a signature upon arrival. Honestly, the peace of mind is just so worth it. All right, so the next step is part two of communication. So now that your painting is headed out into the big old world, you still have a little bit of work to do. Communication is key, always. So is clarity. So hop into your email inbox and queue up a message to your customer. Let them know that the painting has been mailed, pass over the tracking number, and let them know what the approximate ETA is. If you opted in for any extras, like required signatures, make sure you state this so that they are aware. You also want to keep an eye on the tracking information. And these days, you usually can sign up for email updates to make things even easier, because you've got a little task to do shortly after it arrives. And this brings us to the next one. You want to check in on them. So a few days after the painting has arrived, you could check that tracking info, write a sweet little email to your customer asking how everything went, stuff your email with all of the gratitude that you're feeling towards them. At this point, I always like to ask if they're willing to send me a photo of the art in its new home. And if they do, share it to social media, or even if they would like to leave me a few sweet words in a testimonial. So after that email is sent, I move on to my final step of this entire workflow, transaction, process thing, whatever you want to call it, and that is to add your customer to your own personal VIP list. Your customers are gold, so treat them like it. I keep a special VIP list for all of my past customers, and they usually get special priority in a lot of ways. They get early access to promotions and new art, plus special discounts and things just for them. They will really appreciate it, guaranteed. Whew, what a journey. So whether you've sold 100 paintings or zero, hopefully this post will add a little bit of clarity and maybe some new ideas to your process. Alrighty, folks, I will see you in the next episode of the Live Your Art Life podcast. Before you go, I just want to tell you about something super awesome that might just be the secret weapon for growing your art biz that you've been waiting for. I want to tell you about my brand new, totally free training, Your First Artist Growth Plan. This free training is filled with all sorts of goodness. 
It's your A to Z path for creating your first art biz plan that's going to propel you to success and allows you to unlock your artist success to grow your audience and sell your art online. So you can finally kick that ridiculous starving artist myth to the curb where it belongs. You can sign up for my free training today and get instant access in the link of this video. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you found it super helpful. I will see you in the next video. Stay magical.